Hello everybody, welcome to DigiAxel Learning. We unpeel and simplify even the most complex e-commerce and digital topics for you. I'm Alek and today we will be covering the concept of ONDC. What is it and why does it need to exist at all? ONDC or Open Network for Digital Commerce is an initiative by the Ministry of Commerce and Industry to develop open e-commerce. It's touted as a UPI-like system for e-commerce and it's basically looking to create an open market with a main focus on reducing barriers of entry for the sellers, digitizing the supply chain to make it more efficient and providing more options to the shoppers to help them make a more informed decision about their purchases. The platform aims to create new opportunities, restrict digital monopolies and support micro, small and medium enterprises by helping them transact on e-commerce. We need to first understand the concept of a value chain of a shopper buying a product. Let's look at the market, which consists of a set of shops or sellers that procure goods from manufacturers and then sell it to shoppers. There could be middlemen like distributors, stockists, importers in this whole process, but it ends with the final transaction between a seller and the shopper. There are approximately 1 crore shops just for grocery in the country and of course a sum total of 140 crore shoppers. Physical proximity limits access for both sides. Shops can only attract customers physically near them and likewise shoppers only have the option to buy from a select set of stores that are around them. This was all changed by the e-commerce industry with players like Amazon and Flipkart. With advanced last mile delivery systems and technology platforms to enable seamless transactions with minimal human interaction, these companies were able to connect sellers and shoppers across the country regardless of their physical locations. This changed the game for the retail market as shoppers were able to get a much wider selection of products, discover the best prices across the country and get the products delivered conveniently to their homes. Naturally, this industry boomed in India over the years to the point where now Amazon, India and Flipkart have over 20 lakh sellers and 20 crore shoppers on their platforms. In effect, what's happened is that marketplace platforms are like a gate between the sellers and shoppers. They control and enhance the customer experience, but the sellers and shoppers alike now need them for their retail needs. With over 70% market share in e-commerce for Amazon and Flipkart alone, this market can have tendencies like a duopoly, which could allow these platforms to make the transactions unfavorable to the sellers. They could do this in three ways. First, ever increasing platform commissions, which could cut into the profit pool of the sellers. Second, controlling search listings and visibility to decide which seller gets the maximum orders. This could be anti-competitive and could be done in favor of large sellers, which would kill the small enterprises businesses. The third is that with full data on what shoppers are purchasing, these platforms could launch their own private label brands and promote those products over the selection of the sellers, which would of course eat into the revenue of the smaller sellers. The government had realized the rise of the duopoly in the e-com market and the losing battle that small sellers were fighting and decided that they needed to level the playing field for all players, large or small. Ergo, the birth of ONDC or the Open Network for Digital Commerce, an open and democratized marketplace. ONDC is basically an open network where sellers and shoppers can discover each other without any barrier of entry for the sellers and a wide array of options available on the same screen for the shoppers to take an informed decision. But how does it work? Think of the Kirana store that is nearest to your home. If the store wants to start selling online, there are currently two ways. Either they list on marketplaces like Amazon or Flipkart. That would have all the risks that we've mentioned above of crunching margins, revenue risk due to search algorithms and risk of private label brands. The second option is that they could sell on their own, which would require them to buy a domain, build a website, get financial transactions activated on the platform, get servers, look at maintenance, get UI UX done, get their products listed and figure out the supply chain and look after the storage and deliveries. All of this could cost way too high and most small stores in the country can't do that. Now with the government stepping in with the ONDC, all they have to do is register with the ONDC network and list their products online to reach a much wider demographic. Any seller anywhere can get to the entire set of Indian shoppers as long as they have an active internet connection. They can even reach out to more suppliers and also list alongside the larger players like Amazon and Flipkart in a fair marketplace. For the shopper, when they want to buy any product, not only will they be able to select any seller, but also get the option to choose their own delivery partners on ONDC. Much like UPI, which has now been integrated in most of the platforms that deal with financial transactions, ONDC will also give an option to all e-commerce players to integrate ONDC onto their platforms. 
Some platforms like Paytm Mall have already started a pilot with ONDC integration in Bengaluru. So if a user Nidhi searches for an Oppo phone, she will be able to see all the listings from the top sellers on Flipkart and Amazon, along with stores like Chroma as well as the local mobile shops all on the same page. This is intended to help Nidhi make an informed decision in terms of pricing, reviews, trust in the seller and delivery date with all the options available to her. For example, she could get the option to get the phone delivered within two hours with a delivery partner from Dunzo if there was a seller close to her listed on ONDC. The vision for ONDC therefore is to give equal opportunity to every shopper to discover any seller and any seller to be discovered by any shopper. An open and democratized market of this magnitude would be the first of its kind globally, but it's not going to be an easy task and there are understandably lots of challenges ahead if ONDC is to become a household phenomenon. Number one, scams. It is very easy to fool people online as there are multiple barriers between the shopper and the seller. Players like Flipkart and Amazon have assured tags that they use to give shoppers the confidence that they're not being scammed and their grievances, if any, will be addressed. On a scale as large as ONDC, it would become quite difficult for anyone to be completely sure of the legitimacy of the transaction. Number two, technology. By its very nature, ONDC needs to have a massive scale to succeed. If there aren't a lot of seller options on the network, the shoppers won't come and vice versa. That kind of scale needs a very, very strong technology backbone, especially since financial transactions are going to be involved too. That could take some time and iterations to build and it will be critical to ensure that users don't have a bad experience with the technology in the process. Number three is marketing. Lacks of people open marketplace apps like Amazon and Flipkart every day. For any site hosting ONDC, they will need to invest significantly behind marketing efforts to get shoppers to start transacting on these sites instead. Remember that the existing large players have a larger war chest, so they will still be able to bombard the shoppers with their ads and offers on the back of these massive marketing budgets. So this might be an uphill battle. There are some big challenges yet to overcome for us to be sure that ONDC could change the face of e-commerce in India, but the potential is there. The vision and principle is sound and if executed properly, this could revolutionize the e-commerce market, not just in India, but be an inspiration for the world as well. If you found this information useful, do like, share and subscribe for more e-commerce and digital industry insights.